Welcome to a brand new episode of the Hot Mic here on the Outlaw Nation channel. I am the Outlaw, John Roca, joined as always by the In Snyder himself, dropping scoops all week. Jeff Snyder, how are you? Hello? Jeff, hello? Uh-oh. Jeff looks like he's frozen. What do you know? We were just talking, and now he's frozen. Uh, what's going on there, Jeff? <laughs> Hopefully he'll come back in, uh, and we'll be good to go. I don't think I'm frozen, right, guys? Let me know. It seems like Jeff is frozen, so let me uh, pull him down. Well, actually, I can't pull him down because then that uh, leaves me in a weird place with the uh, graphics. But, yes, we don't, oh, there we go. Let's do this one. There we go. We'll wait for uh, Jeff to come back uh, with his um, Internet and his computer. Hopefully, he'll be back. Uh, so let me text him real quick. Sorry, guys. Everything was working fine till we just started the show uh so uh, there we go uh, let's see if he's back now um let's see uh is that there we go there he is all right there you go ladies and gentlemen sorry uh, everybody <laughs> the Jesus. internet cut out <laughs> gotta get you an ethernet cord i man. was what like jamming out to the music and then yep. it just everything started spinning <laughs> <laughs> very strange well thanks you all uh, welcome jeff snyder to the show thank you all so much for hanging out with us uh, we appreciate it madly we had to adjust the time today because i'm going to be on another show later on tonight uh, uh the atg cast show to talk a little star wars news but we're going to talk about star wars news here on this show for sure we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff that's going on nev campbell and kevin williamson coming back to scream uh we've got uh, jeff scoop on scarlett johansson possibly leading the new jurassic world movie and a bunch of other reviews and comments uh and commentaries the bo de mayo situation so there's a lot we're going to get into so send your stream lab send your super chats you see the address above jeff's head it's pinned in the chat it's in the description of the video. Send in your love if you want us to read any of your questions, thoughts, or comments as we go along. All right, Jeff, let's not waste any time. Let's get into this thing here. Let's talk about it. Patty Jenkins, big, big rumors dropping over the last few days here. Well, not rumors, actually. Big, big words from Patty Jenkins over the last few days here that the Rogue Squadron project uh, may not be dead after all. For those of you who don't remember, that is a project that is centered on fire pilots in the Star Wars universe, Disney had pulled the title from its schedule, consequently around the same time that Wonder Woman 1984 did not do well. But she was on the Talking po Pictures podcast with, um, uh, oh, God, I forget his name, the dude over there at uh, TCM. And uh, when I left Star, she said, when I left Star Wars to do Wonder Woman 3 and I started working on that, we talked about, well, maybe I'll come back to Star Wars. And after Wonder Woman 3, we started a, a deal for that to happen. When Wonder Woman 3 went away, Lucasfilm and I were like, oh, we've got to finish the deal. We finished the deal right as the strike was the beginning. So I now owe a draft of Star Wars. So Star Wars, so we will see what happens there. Who knows? So, Jeff... A lot of comments from her about insinuating that she's going to be coming back into the Star Wars universe, that she she owes a script. Are people making a massive deal out of this when this is really just almost like Gal Gadot saying, we're still working on Wonder Woman 3 from what I understand? I mean, I don't want to, like, you know, speak at a turn or dash anyone's hopes, but, like, <laughs> this is not, she's not coming back. Like, you know, if, if you've been listening to this podcast long yeah. enough, then you know what I've said in the past. And that doesn't magically go away. Yeah. Um, I, I'm told, you know, in, in the past, uh, you know, that she's been like difficult, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, and I can almost assure you she will not be directing this movie. OK. Do I think that this movie could happen? Yeah. Down the line? Possibly. OK, you know, if if they were, you know, high on that idea, but I don't think it will be her. Um, mm. I'll put it this way. Steve, Stephen Knight or, or sorry, um, Damon Lindelof. Yeah. Was contractually obligated to deliver his draft as well. Right. Right. The and then the and then within a week was like replaced by Stephen Knight. Right. Um, so I think it's more like there she did have to. um this is about money, like mm -hmm. everything, John. Of and course. in order, and in order to get the money, she has to complete the draft that she owes them. Right. Right. And so right. that's sort of what this is 
this is. Okay. I don't think that that project is particularly active at the moment or active with her. Yeah, Deadline sources said that they heard that uh, Rogue Squadron uh, was never reignited or dead. So it's just kind of sitting in this limbo place of status quo, as you just said here, Jeff. And so what she said here, though, when they asked about directing, it's uh, Ben Mankiewicz. That's it. I always forget his name. Sorry, Ben. So they have a hard job in front of them. What's the first movie they're going to do? They have other directors who have been working, but I am now back on doing Rod's Rogue Squadron. We'll see what happens. We need to get edit to where we're both super happy with it. There's ownership language that she is using in this situation when talking about um, the film. And so do you sense that this is a little bit her trying to rebrand or reclaim some of the brand, like get some of the goodwill, reclaim some kind of power here going on a podcast like this? Because she hasn't been doing much. And certainly her brand Dude. took a lot of hits from the Wonder Woman. Have you ever movie. heard of anything like this, John? Uh, of, a, of, a, of a director going on a podcast and saying, I'm working on a Star Wars thing. Like, have you ever heard of this? Not without Star Wars approval. Not without them first talking about it. So, yeah, it's a really have, odd. Have the thing. trades posted anything about this? No. No. I mean, other than her conversations, obviously. But no, nothing to back up saying that it's going to happen. So, that and that's and that's ultimately what we're talking about. Like, do I think yeah. she owes a draft and that she will finish that draft and, and turn it in? Does that make mm. it that she's like actively working on it? I, I mean, I guess under yeah. under a certain definition. But do I think anybody at Lucasfilm is like anxiously awaiting it? Not necessarily. And uh, okay. and I think that once she fulfills, you know, whatever deal she's alluding to, right yeah. In, yeah, in, yeah. in that interview, that will sort of be it. And they'll, you know, actually, maybe she'll get a story credit on it. Um, right. But I, I imagine that, you know, they'll they'll bring in somebody else. Well, it's quizzical because Ali Aloha brings up an excellent point. Matthew Robinson is the listed screenwriter on IMDb.com. He wrote the draft. So what is the draft that Patty is working on? Why is Patty working on the draft if she isn't going to direct the film? That's, And why is she saying we want to make sure we get it to where we are both happy with it? I mean, again, I don't, I don't want to, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know all the, the specifics, you okay. know, um, but so I don't want to speak out of turn and have okay. the Internet run wild with it. But I just, again, uh, we don't need to recap everything I've said on past podcasts about pa Patty Jenkins. So you're welcome to go looking for it. it it's uh, it was not a match made in heaven. So there. then my question is, why do this? So let's, let's let's move past that. We don't need to rehash those comments, as you say. You don't aggregators. You don't need them running off with your words. But then let's get to this. Why do this? So get your let's get your speculation and analysis on. To get paid. To, I mean, right? To get it's no, all no, about I to mean, get. Why do the draft? I mean, why say this in a podcast, a big podcast run by a guy who hosts TCM is well known because in the business. Why do this? You could quietly do the draft and not say a word and collect your paycheck. Why do this? I, I I don't know. <laughs> I mean, because is this the timid Mike today? Is that what it is? Are we lukewarm Mike? Is that what's no, going it's on like, today? If if she because I guess it's technically true. If if she is working on a revision, I'm just saying like mm. you know I don't expect you know her to continue on to on the project as like a director or anything like that. Okay, so and, and that's what people are saying. Oh, look at IMDb. She's listed as the director. I'm like, are you guys kidding me? Yeah, I think you do this for a reason. I mean, knowing enough creatives in Hollywood, having covered enough creatives in Hollywood over the last few years, you this is a calculated move by her to go on a podcast like this to talk about how she's come back to Star Wars because then everyone ta is talking about her again, right? They haven't talked about her in a while. She was a bit damaged after Wonder Woman 1984, the Wonder Woman 3 debacle, uh, and that, and the Rogue Squadron situation. That's, that's, a, that's a three hits, right? Three strikes, so to speak. So now she goes on this podcast and says, oh, you know, I've owed this and I owe them a draft and I'm going to work on it and blah, blah, blah. To me, this is a way of getting her name back out there, getting her name talked about yeah. more, using some cachet. That's maybe what any more. interview is about, yeah. right? Yeah. That's ultimately what any interview is about. Um, but yeah, it just it seemed very bizarre to mention it. It's, you know, and there yeah. are some, but like how many times do we see filmmakers do that where like they talk about things that, we all kind of know we're like never going to happen. Like the idea and Daniel Rickman has been reporting this, um, yeah. that the Eternals two is ever going to happen, you know, like, hmm. 
that was never going to happen. Like, why would that have happened? Look at the like financially. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, let me throw one more thing out there because today, uh, Hollywood Reporter um, dropped that um, interview with Gina Carano, Seth Abramowitz, doing the um, interview in the article. And Kathleen Kennedy said recently that Rogue Squadron is not something that's necessarily dead or Rangers of the New Republic is not dead. So do you think, and with that lawsuit that happened with Gina Carano here just a few weeks ago, do you think this THR piece, do you think this commentary by Patty, is, is, are, do people sense blood in the water with Star Wars and Lucasfilm? And they're starting to pressure. This reminds me of The Godfather. Remember what Salazzo says to Tom Hagen, could I have gotten to the Godfather 10 years ago? The Godfather is slipping. Is Star Wars slipping? These people are going into business for themselves. They're attacking it from all sides. Do you sense that either they're trying to pressure these things to happen or do they sense blood in the water and they're hitting I it? I don't understand that. what has changed all because of this podcast. Like nothing has changed. Like they're working on the next slate of movies. Right, right. But you do know? you think behind the scenes they told her they approved her saying it. They weren't going to come out and say anything. No. no. Okay. All right. No. All right. No. Well, then why do the Gina Carano piece? Why do, is it just for clicks? The Gina like, Carano. Like, I mean, she just feels hurt. Like, you know, she's like, hmm. and, and granted, I don't know everything that she said. And I know she said she's some terrible things. When I think of her, the yeah. first thing I think is like, she's transphobic, right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. yeah. Right? No? You tell me. I mean, there was Holocaust stuff. Okay. So, you know, a lot of rumor, a lot of accusations of her being disrespectful to Jewish people without she uh, flippantly used that comparison to Republicans getting a little bit I've of seen, shit. I've seen a lot of terrible things out there. I mean, God, the way that, that I see, you know, Jews talked about on Twitter, it's uh, it's mortifying from yeah, like ma- major media people, like people writing for huge sites. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, That's it's, it's pretty wild. But yeah. um, anyways, Gina Carano, it's like I could relate to her. Because I feel like, oh, my Twitter feed is so inflammatory that I can't get a job, you know, at like a mm-hmm. reputable outlet. Like, excuse me. All right. I'll just beat all you guys with my newsletter as I'm going to again tonight. Mm-hmm. So be sure to tune in if you're watching this because I've got a good one. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. No thoughts on it other than that. Is that right? Uh, on Gina Carano? On, yeah, on Gina Carano or Star Wars? Uh, both. How about that? Anything to say on it? Anything more? I mean, if Gina Carano was a better actress, she she would have overcome those comments. Yes. Right? Everybody has stuck their foot in their mouth, you know. Um, right. and, but, like, you know, it, it's all about what you bring to the table. And, you know, frankly, you know, she doesn't bring all that much. Okay. And, you know. All right. I just uh, find it interesting timing that all this stuff is going on around the same time. And I wonder if people are... You know, slowly running things up the flagpole. To these see are the these are totally not like these are out of Lucasfilm's con- control. Like, what moves mm-hmm. are they making that like we should be mad about? It's not like they've lost a director yet, or a right. you know s- some pro- project has imploded yet. You know, right. like this is just outside fucking noise, and they, I think that they have to ignore it. Yeah. I think this is correct too. What JMB says, Jeff speaking his mind is a touch different than a lot of Carano. Yeah, I mean, you comparing yourself to Carano is really not what you want to be doing. Let's, That's how let's, I feel, though. I feel like I'm I've been canceled, and like then you know once you once Jay Penske's fucking operation says that you can't work in this town, then all the publicists, you know, are, oh, you know, this guy's toxic or radioactive, and it's like, no, nah, I'm just gonna do the work, and you know, you'll have to deal with me because if you don't, your clients will pay for it, and then you won't have any clients. No. Well, there you go. Strong statements from Jeff Snyder. Um, all right, let's move on to something that'll make you smile a little bit more. Possibly. I don't know, Jeff, but let's move on to Nev Campbell. Uh, this came out here um, that uh, after sitting out Scream 6 for over a salary dispute, which was a big deal with the Scream fandom, uh, Nev Campbell has announced her return for Scream 7. She posted uh, on Instagram, Sydney Prescott is coming back with four uh, exclamation points there. And she says, it's always been a blast and an honor to play Sydney in the screen movies. Uh, my appreciation for these films and for what they have meant to me has never waned. I'm very happy and proud to say I've been asked in the most respectful way to bring Sydney back to the screen and couldn't be more thrilled. Scream creator and writer Kevin Williamson is taking over as the director for Scream 7. He wrote the first, second, and fourth Scream movies. 
EP'd the reboot and its sequel. And Guy Busick is the one who is who wrote the fifth and sixth screen films with James Vanderbilt is taking over the screenwriting veins, or reigns rather, while Vanderbilt uh, will continue to produce. And Radio Silence stays on as executive producer. So, Jeff, you're a big Scream fan. It's been uh, documented all over the internet and on your own uh, social media. Um, your thoughts when you hear this on the heels of uh, Melissa Barrera being fired for her political points of views and Jenna Ortega not returning to the franchise. I know you weren't a fan of those versions. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Sure. Give me the good news. All right. The good news is that Nev Campbell and Kevin Williamson, to me, is a better combination than Melissa Barrera and Radio Silence. Okay. That's the good news. Okay. Hashtag upgrade. <laughs> okay. The bad news is, yeah, this is a terrible decision. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. Spyglass. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? This guy, Kevin Williamson. I want to be very clear. Yeah. Kevin Williamson is a personal hero of mine. Okay. Like, like possibly a Mount Rushmore in my life. Wow. No, jo no joke. That's strong. Scream is, scream is why I'm a writer. Dawson's Creek, you know? Mm. I mean, those those are like, oh, I could like cry. I'm like tearing up just thinking about them right now and how mm -hmm. much those, those things mean to me. Whereas, you know, people love Star Wars and they love Star Trek. Scream, fucking that shit. Oh, my God. And The Crow, which we're about to talk about. It's a yeah, real right. it's a real day for me. Yeah. So Kevin Williams is a personal hero of mine. And I suppose after being on film sets, he, you know, uh, after uh, of 30 years, he's improved his skills. Okay. Right. Because he made his debut with teaching Mrs. Tingle. Oh God. Which is one of the worst movies I think I've ever seen. Is that Helen Mirren? Yeah. Yeah. With, um, Ashton. is it Ashton or Sean William Scott? Who's the guy? Or is it? Oh, Oh, oh right, right, right. Okay. Katie yeah, Holmes. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. I forget Katie who Holmes. the guy is, but, um, it was it was oh, it was Barry Jenkins, I think. Barry Jenkins, wow. No, 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 not Barry Jenkins. Barry Watson. Barry Watson. Oh, okay. Barry Jenkins is the director, obviously. Right. Barry right. Watson, right? Is yeah, Barry name? Watson. That's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I was on it. I was on it. It was close. <laughs> so, uh, horrible movie. Yes. Kevin William and it's like Kevin Williamson. You you bring him in to direct if he's going to direct his own screenplay. Right. Right. They're right. still working off of Guy Busick's screenplay. Yeah. So, so it's like out of all the directors, I know that Kevin Williamson knows this franchise better than anybody, but like you bring him in to write, you don't bring him in to direct. And certainly not at this juncture where yeah. the Scream franchise is on this trajectory. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that Nev Campbell's return, as bad as the, the taste, uh, you know, that Melissa Pereira's exit has left in the mouths of many fans. Yeah. I think that Nev Campbell's return would really juice this franchise, don't you think? Uh, I think it's an interesting situation to look at from all sides because a you're coming back not as the first choice. You're coming back because so what? Melissa Bar they paid her fine, but you're coming right? back after Melissa Barrera was let go because her ego was already bruised, spoke, John. Right? She spoke. Uh, Jenna Ortega, who is the actual star of the moment is not coming back. Right, she was never coming back. She was never coming back. So you're coming back now to be a part of this. They backed the dump truck of money up to the driveway and paid you, and now you're going to come back to the only thing you've been relevant for for a very long time. You're going to bring Kevin Williamson on, who has not, does not have a great track record as a director, as you just pointed out. And so, and... He almost he, has no track record. I mean, I won't even, like... No. I'll, I'll even, like, nuke that from my mind. Like, forget yeah. the fact that he made a bad movie when he was a young man. Right. right. He had the opportunity. For right, him. right. You can... Everything yeah. was being thrown at him. Like, I'm not even going to blame Kevin Williamson for teaching me this tingle. Let's take that off the resume. Yeah. There's nothing else. And he's been on a dozen TV shows where he yeah. easily could have snapped his fingers. Yep. And said, I want to direct an episode. And he never even showed any interest in it. Right. So it's kind of crazy to me yeah. that now is the time to jump in and direct. And, and, uh, and it's, it's, it's just shocking that Spyglass uh, felt this, way, this was the way to go. This is desperate, is what it reeks of. It's desperate to, re to retain the franchise rights. It's desperate to do something. And it's trying to be a nostalgia grab, which isn't this what they make fun of in all the Scream movies is bullshit like this. So isn't this 
going again. This is like Heather Langenkamp coming back to Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, isn't this what they make fun of in those screen movies? So if it doesn't ma- if it doesn't go meta and make fun of Sidney Prescott and make fun of Nev Campbell, then they've pissed away and Kevin Williamson, then they've pissed away an opportunity and they're spitting in the face of the actual point of screen. I, I, I did consider that. I was like, what if this is the Scream's new nightmare? Yeah. Right? Which yeah. I think was also seven. Yeah. I think it was also number seven. <laughs> so uh, so that would be kind of inter- interesting. Um, you also escaped five serial killers, Jeff. At some point, it stretches credulity, and you're like, this is but just like, for fucking money. Ne- Nev Campbell plays Nev Campbell, and she's just going trying to live her life as like a character actress these days, and like that. some like obsessed fan yeah. puts on the the thing. I mean, if that's what Guy Busick has done, and I don't know that if he, if that's what he's done, then hire me to write the next one because I'm a lot cheaper, and I just had the same idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that, that idea I like that it's actually Nev Campbell, not. Sydney Prescott, and it is Nev right. Campbell who's living her life, not trying to be, but can't escape Sydney Prescott. Everyone always brings it up, and then someone goes too far because it could be a commentary on fandom, as we've Nev seen. Campbell now, is Nev- the ultimate final girl. Yeah, right, exactly. And as we've seen recently, people are crossing lines all the time. As fans confronting, um, confronting creatives, uh, doing these kinds of things, even on fucking press lines. These influencers are confronting creatives with embarrassing moments, embarrassing things, trying to get them to perform for them for their views. So there's things that you can cross a line with here that I think would be really interesting. And people trying to take a shortcut to fame by killing someone or by uh, 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 stalking someone or whatever. So it could be an interesting way down. Yeah, does Courtney Cox come back? Does David Arquette now come back as David Arquette as opposed to... Do we? Is that a possibility? I mean, I think that would be great. I think it's a way to get everybody back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, one one of our one of my uh, a friend of the show uh, mm. would like to point out that it was called Killing Mrs. Tingle originally, and uh, and then <laughs> and then Columbine happened, and the movie got like gutted. Oh wow! Because they couldn't have the whole killing a teacher thing. Oh was, yeah. Well, that makes sense. You know, don't fuck Hopefully, okay. So, <laughs> like, what do I want to see from this scream movie? Like. Yeah. What do you okay, so I like. I, by the way, I, and I did some reporting on it. You know, okay. like, I looked into some of the names that had been rumored. Right, like like Kevin Williamson wrote Sick, right, which was directed mm. by John Hyams, and Sick was really good. Alone, the movie that John Hyams did before Sick was great. Uh-huh. So I was totally down with the John Hyams pick. Um, okay. You know, I, I, but that ultimately did not happen. And then I looked into like Karen Kasama and everything, and one person mm. was just like, she ain't directing number seven and nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think she'd, do, yeah. I mean, it would make no sense for her to come in to it. the Scream franchise, Karen Kusama. I don't know if that's the, I'm right. just saying that was that was one of the yeah. names that like you know yeah. people are trying to like oh can you, you know if you look into this one because I heard that this might happen <laughs> I mean, it all end, ends up being bullshit and, and they went right back to Kevin in the end yeah and there's so, again there's something interesting there especially if they're doing a meta thing um, do you trust them to pull it off Jeff you don't need to you don't need me to tell you they're a little long in the tooth you don't need me to tell you that are they going to be able to capture that's why they need to do something completely fucking different. Mm. I don't give a fuck how much money they made on the last one. Like, yeah. you know, like money. I mean, and people try to compare it too, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. the, the dollar 20 years ago, you know, come on. So yeah. uh, these movies, I, I just think we're not very good. Okay. So and at, le- at least this is a chance to do something different because if they continued on that track with right. another Melissa Barrera movie, and whether Jenna Ortega was in it or not, it may have just been, you know, Melissa and the other two. Yeah. No, that would have been bad. That would have been even worse. Oh, so, I agree. It would not have worked without Jenna. Spyglass half full. Spyglass yeah. half full. <laughs> yeah, I just I just think you've set yourself up now for a massive fall. Like the uh the expectations are so high now because you've because the fandom didn't universally go, yay! They they were uh, there's it's been split. And now you've set yourself a very high, high wire rack to walk. And if you fall off that high wire rack, the fucking fall is precipitous. And so I think this could kill the franchise completely if they don't pull this off. And then you're really doing what you should have done from the beginning 
in this situation, completely rebooting it, recasting it, starting all over again, if you even want to continue it. Again, half of this fucking town is here because of Star Wars, right? Yeah. Like when they were kids, they saw Star yeah. Wars and it made them want to make movies. Yeah. I'm here because I saw Scream straight mm-hmm. up. The, the the only ranking that could possibly exist is in chronological yeah. order. They, this has been a series of diminishing creative returns. Yeah. yeah. And anyone who says otherwise is insane. Yeah, six, was, six, six was unwatchable. <laughs> Xenoar makes an excellent point. Pitch U.S. Congress blames stab for all crime and tries to ban it, but Ghostface goes on a rampage. Eh, you don't want to go political with horror. That gets a little weird. Um, obviously, you know, you can make social political commentary, but that's a little weird to start blaming this for that. I mean, if you can make it work, fine, but I think it would be a, a pushy thing. And Melissa, no one is saying Nev can't make her money. We're not saying take Nev away and don't let her make money. We're saying that now that you've made this decision, it, you know, you, you there's a lot of expectation now. She came, came back to star. Up. She came yeah. back to star too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. No, they're not bringing in some young actress. Exactly. The, I, she is the lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it may and it may be a kind of thing where it's like, you know, a half and half. Like I could see some mm. sort of shocking, like they kill her off halfway through the movie. Like that would be wild. Ooh. You know, like that would be a shocking twist. Yeah. I mean, I think that they really need to shake shit up. Again, I don't have any inside info about any of that. Right. This is just like what I would do. Um, and the other thing I would do if I was Kevin Williamson, you mm. have to cast Dawson. Okay. I mean, Michelle Williams hasn't like how many Oscar nominations? Yeah. Josh Jackson has a pretty thriving TV career where he's like True. the star of multiple prestige series. Yeah. Katie Holmes is just like a, a celebrity, right? And she's always yeah. going to be a celebrity. Yeah. But Dawson, Dawson needs a fucking hand. <laughs> give, give James a call and put him in this movie. I'll tell you because everyone would think he's the killer and he'd make a great red hiring. You he'd want Vanderbeek to come back? Is that what you want? A hundred million percent. It would be genius. Kevin, please listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. We'll follow see. James on Instagram because that guy and his family are so wholesome. He has the most like picture perfect family. It's unbelievable. Doesn't didn't he get into some, trouble recently with some of his comments am i wrong on this who doesn't yeah everybody's got a fucking opinion these days i'm, I'm done with like oh he got into trouble comments like who gives a shit is you know like come on all right well let's take a quick break as we're almost at the 30 minute mark thanks to everybody sitting in the stream labs and super chats we will get to them later on in the show we got a couple more or a few more stories to get to first but we will definitely answer your stream labs and super chats we got over 500 of you hanging out with us please remember to hit a like on the video share it on your social media and jeff where they where can they go to subscribe to your newsletter if they want to read your uh, daily stuff the insnider.com there you go all right we'll be right back right after this All right, Jeff, since we left talking about your newsletter, let's uh, jump back into your newsletter and talk about this big story you broke here. that the Your reporting, the two-time Academy Award nominee, Scarlett Johansson, uh, has been offered the lead role in the yet-to-be-titled Jurassic World sequel, which is Jurassic Park 7. We just finished talking about Scream 7, which is expected to begin filming this summer. Uh, you stated that no further details are available and talks are presumably in the early stages, but that Johansson had already met with Edwards and uh, the producer there, Frank Marshall, to be part of this project. So, Jeff, what more can you say on this? What Can you elaborate more? What, what, what more do you have to say about this uh, particular news story? Quite the bomb, huh? <laughs> it was very big. That's for sure. Didn't see this one coming myself at this time yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going with a different scoop last night and mm-hmm. i was working on the second story really yeah and then and that was at like 5 30 <laughs> and i got a tip like yeah like around six yeah and started making calls okay and i gave it about 45 minutes i mean maybe it was like around 5 30 but yeah i uh, started making calls gave it about 45 minutes yeah wasn't hearing back um and then got a second source and then it was like okay i gotta take out the scoop put it right up this scoop put that in there you know take out the you know there's not gonna be a second story i don't have time to write it yeah um 
and just pivot. And that's what you have to do in this business. Uh, and it, it was, you know, I ran it as a rumor. There's only one yeah. other story I've ran as a hot rumor, which was the Tom Cruise and Tarantino thing, which like, you know, may or may not work out because, yeah. you know, at now that uh, that Inurido movie has been uh, announced, right? Oh, like yeah, that, yeah. that may right. conflict. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, he certainly had the talks with with uh, a discussion with Tarantino or whatever. But anyways, mm -hmm. Scarlett, you know, has basically had a discussion with, yeah. you know, Gareth and with Frank Marshall. Uh, and whether it works out, I don't know. But I think when you're the top choice for a movie like that, and here's the thing about Scarlett, her last three movies, right? It was like Marriage Story and and uh, the the Wes Anderson movie, um, yeah. right? And then uh, the you know an another yeah, uh, Bombach movie. Yeah, Bombach. Or, yeah. Or no, it was Bombach Anderson and then some someone else. Anyways, yeah. um, but it's like she could use another blockbuster, and she can't go back to Marvel, right? Right. No, that's kind of sad. And you can't go to DC, right? Not really. I mean, you Not just right did now. The, you don't you, want to make that movie. You just did the superhero thing. You just yeah. did. It. You can't do Fast and Furious. Ridiculous. That, that, that that's dying <laughs> no. anyways. Holy you, can't, you, you can't. You can't do. I mean, Star Wars. That seems also a little ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Scarlett Johansson in Star Wars. A little ridiculous. Yeah. You need that. Like there are very few mega mega franchises, mm. right? And I think that this is as good as any to say yes to. Yeah. Uh, I think that she has kids. You know. Yeah. Two kids. Kids like dinosaurs. I mean, it's Steven. Oh. It's, it's always tough to say no to Steven. Right. Uh, there's just a lot of things here that, that, to me, yeah, I think that she would say yes to. Okay. Uh, I mean, I like the idea of her coming on. I think this is how you kind of push away from what you had before. She's a strong enough name and presence that people will now give this thing a second look, whereas those last three films, in my opinion, were pretty fucking terrible, made a lot of money, uh, but weren't reviewed that great. And so where do you want to go next? You go with someone who's uh, a, a very good star, who'll get you some good press, some uh, engender some goodwill, and then you see what you've got here in the combination with uh, Edwards and Johansson and see what they can do. And she's a good action star when she gets... I mean, I thought that Black Widow movie may not have been 100% great, but I thought she was damn good in it. And so... I mean, yeah. gone. No, I was just saying, so having her lead the film, having lead maybe a new trilogy here is exciting news for her. And I'm sure they're going to give her space to go and do her independent stuff or or smaller films or produce this stuff through a production oh, yeah. company. So she'll have time to do what she wants to do. So I, I think it's a smart move for her to still reclaim the fact that she's a star. Like she's a star. You, I know. What you do like, you, and, and what do you think that SNL appearance was about? Yeah, exactly. Like but getting her back. I mean, I saw a great meme. Someone said, someone put some a gif up of all the women when they found out, all the female comedians when they found out that Scarlett Johansson was going to do <laughs> Katie Britt. And they're all just like throwing shit at the wall and shattering shit because they're mad they don't get to play her. And it, but hey, when you can get Scarlett Johansson, you get Scarlett Johansson. So I think it's a smart move it's for the them. Colin Joe's connection there. I mean, the other thing, and yeah, guys, right. read the newsletter. Please subscribe to the newsletter. If you need a discount, DM me. There you go. I'm publicly. I'm get, if the listeners of this podcast, there you go. Say the say the word banana in your message, <laughs> okay? And I will we will talk about a discount. And that way, I will have known that that uh, this has gone that you've seen this. But um, you know, I said that this we're talking about Universal. Yeah. What was the what was the big Universal movie that she did? It was called Lucy, and it grew four four hundred sixty nine million dollars back. People and that was that a movie. Ago. That's a good fucking movie. People bash that movie. That was Luke Besson's it's last gasp. It's a good movie, man. I, I didn't love it, but it, it's not bad. It's certainly not bad. And yeah. it was a giant hit for them. It was. So like they've always wanted to work with her again, find a way to work with yeah. her. She's just been busy, you know, with these odd tours and with Marvel. So yeah, absolutely. To me, to me, it, it was just like, listen, I hear about oh Brad Pitt getting this offer. So, you know, Tom Cruise getting this, all that kind of shit. Guys, they get 30 offers a day. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> They're getting it, it, you start at the top and work your way down the list, right? Yeah, yeah. But when you when you sometimes hear something that's just like, would she do this? Yeah. You have, and, and I'm literally sitting there with Stephanie. We're like trying to go to dinner, and I like, I need another hour. Like, I mean, like, what is she gonna <laughs> potentially say yes to this? Because if not, I'm not even gonna run it. Yeah. Right. What's the, it what's the point sense. of that? If I don't, yeah. if I don't think that there's a chance in hell it will work out. Yeah. 
it's you know and it's just a rumor like it because it is it's early days it's been right. you know right but we'll see Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think what um, Ray of Water says, I have friends who didn't have an inca- link- inkling of interest in this uh, Jurassic World movie until Jeff, Jeff broke this rumor. Now they're interested and sub to Jeff, LOL. There you go. There you it's, go. So, it, yeah. I mean, honestly, because I see all the, you know, the responses. Mm. I was paying attention to that shit last night. It went over very well. Yeah. yeah. People were like, I could see this, especially with Chris Pratt, who was very much front and, front and center in the last trilogy, to have someone sort of on his level yeah. with a, but a woman, I think, you know, and there's so few like giant female movie stars. It's so funny because I was thinking, I was talking about this earlier this week with Jurassic. Mm-hmm. And we were with somebody, and I was like, you know, who would be good in Jurassic? Who's another giant female movie star who's like due for for a movie and near and had worked with David Leach before, even though David Leach isn't directing now, but he was mm-hmm. going to. I yeah. wonder if this would have been his choice for the female lead. Who do you think I'm talking about? I don't know. Tell me who. Bullet Train. Oh. Uh, who, mm. Who is the giant female star in Bullet Train? I don't remember. Who was it? Who Sandra was it? Bullock. Oh, Sandra Bullock. Oh, Sandra I, Bullock. You don't you couldn't see Sandra Bullock in a Jurassic movie? Sandra like, Bullock was you don't even see her on the screen. How is she the star of the movie? Come on. I don't think so. Come on. I, I, I wouldn't have thought Sandra Bullock to lead a Jurassic World movie. I think that she's a little bit past the time to do that, don't you think? Not, I mean, depending on how they just had movies with fucking Sam Neill and Laura Dern. Like Sandra Bullock no. is, you know, a gigantic, gigantic movie star. Right? No, no doubt. No doubt. Right. So no I, doubt. I was just talking earlier this week being like, you know, what about her? Like, you know, because she yeah. is due for something big. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably she right. She is due. But I don't see her seeking out big things. Right. I haven't seen that in a while. So I don't know. But you're right. She, I mean, it would be the right time to get her onto something because people love her. People love Sandra Bullock, like decades, generations of film fans love her. So, um, yeah, interesting point. Okay, well, there we go. We'll keep tabs on it, Jeff. I'm sure you'll keep tabs on it, rather. We'll keep tabs on you keeping tabs on this story uh, as it goes along. But let's move on to another Jeff-centric story. This uh, popped this morning, uh, the first official trailer for The Crow. Um, I did a trailer reaction for it. It is doing well on my channel, so thank you very much to everybody who's watched it. I was excited when I saw the notice come up, come up this morning, jumped out of bed, jumped in the shower, went in front of the cameras and did this reaction because I wanted to see what this was all about. Now, I know Jeff is the one who talks about how much of a big fan he is of The Crow. I am also a massive fan of The Crow from the night. That and Blade were my films of the 90s when it comes to superhero films that I thoroughly loved with, of course, Brandon Lee because I'm a massive Bruce Lee fan. But this one has Bill Skarsgård, as you see there, uh, taking the reins as the lead. We've got Danny Houston as the villain, FKA Twigs as the as the uh, murdered love interest here with Rupert Sanders directing. So, Jeff, the trailer had bloody kills. It was three minutes long. It was in a lot of locations, supernatural elements, uh, and a Danny Houston whispering into people's ears, demonic type of vibe. So, and some abs from Skarsgård. Your thoughts on the trailer, Jeff? Uh, it looked, it looked like a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, it didn't look like the crow, man. I'm sorry. It was, it was heartbreaking to watch this morning. I was like. I don't want to say what I actually said, <laughs> but it was bad. Wow. Okay. They John wicked it, dude. I mean, yeah, they absolutely like, Lionsgate acquired this movie. Like, mm-hmm. did they, but like, did they not make it? Cause it felt like a Lionsgate movie. Like, yeah, <clears throat> they gave it the John wick treatment. Uh, and, and that, I don't know, man, it's just, and it looked generic. All right. So <laughs> you've heard Jeff's point. I loved it. I thought it was fucking great. I, I was like, this is how you want to separate yourself from the other movie. Walk your own path. You don't do the same makeup. You, that's 90s. You don't do any of that stuff. You you modernize it. You add more supernatural elements. And this almost has a Constantine vibe to it, Jeff. Like, he seems like he's in a battle between heaven and hell. Uh, uh, Danny Houston, like, whispering something in people's ear that makes him go crazy. Is he a demon who has escaped hell and taken human form on Earth? Is that why Eric is being sent back here? Not only just to seek revenge, but to stop this demon from what he's, what he's been doing on Earth? I have questions about that. We went to the netherworld, which we didn't do 
in the original Crow movie. So I kind of like that aspect of it all. And it felt confident, like a strong, confident director delivering. And yes, as you said, a um, a John Wick-esque with all the locations we went to approach to this thing. And the fact that he keeps living, even though he keeps getting killed, I thought was really interesting. So I will say I liked I know. Um, it just didn't feel like the crow to me. <laughs> Look at That's this the thing. Look at this nerd bringing up his fucking comic. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, the crow to me is such is a movie that's made in the writing and it's, it's been so crazy mm. to like to watch responses come in about the original being like, Oh, I watched that movie. Like Brandon Lee was great and the visuals were cool, but the writing sucked. Dude. The reason that movie's a classic is because of the writing and how quotable it is. Okay. Yeah. There are so like, it is, it's so iconic. Uh, I, I could give you fucking 50 lines from that movie. Um, Literally so, everything Wincott says in that movie is fucking quotable. Just about everything Wincott says. Yeah. And, Everybody, I mean, everything that David uh, Patrick Kelly says is, is uh, mm. you know, T-Bird and shit. Yeah. I mean, Skank is quotable, fucking Tintin, <laughs> like everybody, <laughs> everybody, Ernie Hudson. So, uh, you know, the people who say that, I just dismiss. And, and I don't see mm. any evidence of that in this. That's the problem, right? Okay. It just seems like I'm just going to, like, fucking stare you down with my crow makeup. And, like, he, I mean, Bill Skarsgård, and I don't, like... <laughs> But are we doing? But are we? Get, listen, I'm I'm gonna walk and get some shit for this, I most. But are we doing a little bit of revisionist history? I mean, Brandon Lee was a, a, just just crossing the line into good actor. I mean, should I show you the Dolph Lundgren film he did and tell me he's a good actor? He was rapid becoming, fire. I did see that. I did. He, see was, that. Yeah, he was becoming a good actor. His father was a fucking that was good stuff, but he was becoming a good actor, maybe with more time. Yeah, more sure. More I'll more. give you that. That's the tragedy of it all, right? Skarsgard, it's really interesting. A lot of people don't think he's necessarily that good of an actor. I mean, you weren't talking about him coming out of John Wick 4, certainly out of take, it. But take away Pennywise. Take yeah, it like, yeah. for, oh, let's just like forget because he was very, I thought he was good as Pennywise, not as good as Tim Curry, but like he was right, fine. Right. Um, I yeah, thought but, so too. I liked him as Pennywise. Yeah. But like, what What else? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. That's what I'm getting at. I just, and, and FKA Twigs and like none of that. I mean, uh, listen, I probably wouldn't have known any of the henchmen back then, you know, in, in, in the crow, but like yeah. the henchmen just looked generic and. Oh, totally. hundred percent. And as much as I love Danny Houston, I don't think I like a, uh, a villain with like supernatural powers, which is, you know, what I've heard he does have. It, very clear from the ti from the trailer that he has that. Yeah. Like that, that was, did you see the, the Crow 2, City of Angels? <laughs> yes, I did see City of Angels. I didn't see the, the other end, two. Like movies. that's a good but, movie until yeah. like it's final 15 minutes, which are like maybe the worst 15 minutes ever committed to film. <laughs> like there are, it's a horrible, horrible ending in the City of Angels. Um, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just um, I'd love to be proven wrong. I'd love it because I, you know, Rupert Sanders. I don't think is the worst director, I, uh, and this movie did have some interesting visuals. I could tell, but I don't know who is like who is the what? Where, where do you where would you put Skarsgård just from the trailer? Where would you put him in the ranking of the Crow actors? Right? Because what have you got? Vincent Perez, right? Didn't we get Edward Furlong in one of these at some point? Yeah, what Furlong and, and Eric Mabius. I and mean, Eric Mabius, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, on, on that level, he's probably second. Yeah, I would <laughs> say second. Although I do right? like I mean, Vincent Perez. He had a moment. He had a moment. Furlong had a fucking, if any of them had a moment, it was Furlong. True. But, you, you know, you, you by the time of Wicked Prayer, that, that's not, <laughs> that wasn't the Furlong you were getting. Fair point. Fair point. All right. So uh, Jeff and I are split on this. Um, did you do Wicked I Prayer? Or, wait, yeah, which one was Wicked Prayer? Did Eric? What, what was the Crow Three? One of them was was it the Crow Resurrection? The Crow Resurrection. Uh, what the was it? One? Uh, hold on. Let me take a look here. The Crow. I, movie need, I need to know order. this. Let's see. Crow Salvation was yeah. three, right? Crow, okay, that was angels, right. Salvation, Wicked. I was prayer. right. Furlong um, was Wicked. Wicked Prayer. I just want to make yeah. sure that I had that right. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Salvation yeah. was three. By the way, Kirsten Dunst in Salvation. 
I did not remember that. So, oh yeah, uh, interesting. It's interesting. had some some bizarre stars over the years, right? Yeah, Iggy William Pop, Atherton. Iggy Pops and City of Angels. He's he's amazing. Yeah, you know you're in trouble when you're doing Edward Furlong and Tara Reid. That's when you know you're in trouble with your leads. Dude, the and, Crow. Let me tell you who the Crow should have been right now. And if right? Danny Trejo is in it, yeah, go ahead. Yes, who 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 do you think should have been the Crow? Oh, well, I mean, I know Hiddleston was talking about it, but I didn't even see Hiddleston. He would have been decent, actually. I, I don't, it, it, a, 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 an emaciated looking guy who has this kind of because people love Brandon in the movie because they like cared about him, right? Like initially, Brandon has that energy that you want to care about him. So that was an important part. So you could follow all the like brutal things he did in that movie and we're okay with it. I don't know if anyone. I'd have to spend some time. What comes to mind for you? I wanted to see Gordon Levitt. Oh, JGL would have been interesting. That's actually a I really just, good. I choice. always, I always like him, and I just find him. Hmm. He could be sensitive yet intense. Yeah, and you like him. Like you like him. He's got that warm energy. I just like I like Joseph. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a nice choice. Maybe right after Inception. That would have been the time. Hit him right there. Right in this prime. Um, yeah, a little bit interesting. Um, oh, yeah, Tom Sturridge from Sandman doing a nice job on Sandman. That could have been an interesting choice as well. Um, all right, let's move on to some more stories here, Jeff. We'll take a break and then hit your Streamlabs and Super Chats. I saw someone asking the Streamlabs, do they come up on the screen? No, but I do read them. The Super Chats come up on the screen, but Streamlabs, I have to read them. Oh, Jeremy Allen White. What about that from the bear? Would he have been a good crow? No. <laughs> <laughs> Shia LaBeouf. Oh, man. I, just yeah, for that dude. alone, I would have Sh- loved you. Shia for every role. Ever. Yeah. What if you had caught Driver just at the beginning? Dude, Zeno Hour. Go to Zeno Hour. Not Adam Driver. No. Zeno oh, Hour, 100%. What, what the think? fuck? What the fuck? Oh, the song choice at the end. Over the trailer. the trailer. I would just yeah. say over the, the, the song that was over the trailer and the song that was at the end. It was like, oh, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Play to play to your your fucking core. Play yeah. to fans. Yeah, Pattinson would have been interesting way back when. Certainly, um, I like the idea of uh, of uh, Adam Driver at the beginning of his career could have been interesting. His crow would have had a lot of pathos. I think that would have been fascinating to see. If you wanted to go big studio with Driver, I think it could have worked. Um, well, let's stay in the vein of superhero films, Jeff. Batman Two has been pushed. To 2026, this is coming from Anthony D'Alessandro, Deadline, and a number of other sources. It is no longer opening on October 3rd of 2025. Uh, It is going to be on October 2nd of 2026. This, according to them, is because of the two strikes. And then also, they speculate that it allows some distance here for James Gunn's Superman film, which comes out in 2025, of July 11th of 2025. Um, And it, of course, is not part of the Gunniverse. But uh, taking the date will be Maggie Gyllenhaal's The Bride, which stars Christian Bale and Jesse Buckley. And then PTA uh, got a release date on this announcement as well, August 8th of 2025 for his new film um, uh, that will be coming. And then they pushed The Alto Nights, which really, I don't know why we're even releasing that movie, coming out in 2025 as well. So your thoughts, Jeff, on the push here for Batman 2. Does this make sense? Do you like the idea? And why did this happen? Uh, it happened because of the lack of, um, I mean, twofold, obviously the strike didn't help, right? Mm-hmm. Cause it was pencils down for Reeves for, you know, like six months or something like that. Right. So that slowed things down for sure. Um, a project probably lost a little momentum then. And by then, by the time, you know, he was, you know, finishing up the script and everything and figuring out what this movie was actually going to look like and, and what he yeah. would need. Uh, I feel like while they were figuring all the, all the scheduling out, you know, all yeah. the stages got booked and stuff. So, um, you know, that's forcing them to wait until the top of next year. Yeah. And, you know, I, I don't think you can have a movie of that size and importance out in 10 months. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I did, you know, hear about it a couple of days before the announcement and I, I tried to confirm it, but I guess I didn't cover all my bases and all that kind of shit. Um, it was a little disappointing, but, uh, it's all good. Hmm. So, yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, I, I was surprised that they didn't go to March, right? Yeah. Because, you know, the March was successful for them and they love that March date, right? Yeah. But they may be holding that for something else. 
So are you speculating uh, or do you've heard and you can't say? Nah, I'm just I mean, I'm sure I'm okay. sure they are holding it for something else. OK, um, I think that there's probably more release date announcements coming soon, you know, maybe next week or this weekend. Well, isn't this dangerous? Four and a half years later, you're going to get a sequel to this movie. I mean, this isn't like Joe. I mean, Joker is coming out quicker with a sequel than the Batman like that. The fuck that makes no sense to me when you look at it. and don't give me this shit that I see some fans like Matt Reeves really needs to just kind of go through every word and write down and get all fuck get the fuck out of here like it's, you know you can write a what script do you mean the, like, the the strike you don't need four and a half years to write a script the strike. And don't give me this, come Jeff come on Jeff I mean there's, right, there's a, a whole a whole change in DC leadership right so they're probably figuring out like hey like. What is this movie even going to be? Are we going to connect it? Are we not going to connect it? Mm. Right now, it's not connected. Would it shock me if they connected it after this movie? Yeah. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> um, I just, you know, I think if Pattinson is working, I just, I don't understand the idea of introducing another fucking. Batman. Well, that, let, let's move on to that. Because that's what some people are speculating, that this feels yeah. similar to what they did with Ben Affleck's Batman, that they said, oh, no, it, it's delayed, but he's still working on it. Some people are speculating that this is actually the way they're setting this film up for the chop. I don't know. All I'm saying is mm. that people, including me, yeah, but people, including them, can, <laughs> can say anything. Okay. Right? Because they can always change their minds. That's true. And reverse course. Yeah. Uh, you know, so... Yeah, you know, that goes back to the Patty Jenkins story. People can say anything, <laughs> including me. Free country. Uh, that's true. Since there's a hesitation with you uh, today, I don't I don't know where that's going. Are you, I mean, there are certain things that are on the it? record, or not okay. on the record, but on background, right? Right, right. And then there are certain things that are off the record, which means you just can't repeat them. That's and fair. So I'm trying oh. to walk a very fine line of what I can say, what I can't say, but you know, I wouldn't. Uh, That's fair. I don't think you're going to see Patty Jenkins is uh, rogue. What's it called? The rogue squadron. Rogue squadron yeah. I don't think you're going to see that anytime soon. Mm. I mean, you know, maybe I'm, I'm looking at Matt Reeves's resume. Maybe I'm being unfair because I mean, what, uh, he wrote the yards. Um, that's so legendary. That story about the yards, but then he d does Cloverfield in two thousand eight. Directs Let Me In, Planet of the Apes in two thousand fourteen. War for Planet of the Apes two thousand seventeen. Then Batman five years later. Writing wise, Let Me In two thousand ten. Doesn't write another screenplay, credited screenplay until War for Planet of the Apes in two thousand seventeen. Does that Ordinary Joe series, which was okay, but then doesn't. But then twenty twenty two is the next script he writes. So. I guess maybe I'm being unfair to him. Maybe he is a guy who takes a very long time to write his scripts. He pours over it to make sure it's right. Maybe the yard situation kind of scarred him a bit. So interesting. All right. So his, am, I, am I being unfair, Jeff? Am I being unfair? I mean, his company has been very active. It's not like he's, he's just like pulled this disappearing act in, in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah. So, no, 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 totally. Yeah. And I do think that Reeves... Okay. Um, you know, adhered to the strike as well. Like I, I think it, I think there are a lot of people that did not. Yeah, that's what I feel like. Because if a lot of studios that were like, "Hey, I understand if you don't, if you can't write anything, but like, if you could on the side, it'd be great if the script was ready." Yeah, <laughs> I saw so many people respond to my tweet like, "Oh, it was pens down," and it's like, if you think every writer put their they fucking pen weren't. down, you're out of your fuck. You need to buy a bridge in Brooklyn. You need they to go get They definitely weren't. Swamp land in the Everglades. People got to work. And especially nowadays when everything is constricting now the way it is, people were fucking desperate to work. So, yeah. John, people want to see me worked up. People want to <laughs> see me get angry. They do, man. This is not the calm, Mike. This is the getting upset. Jerry's getting upset. All right, before we leave the world of comic book movies, let's move on to one more thing. Venom's new title, Jeff. We got to ask you. They they basically stole the documentary title oh. from the Chicago Bulls. Venom: The Last Dance. Here, uh, Tom Hardy leading this thing. Kelly Marcel directing this thing. It's going to hit theaters earlier than originally uh, planned. Here now, it's going on October twenty fifth, which Sony announced on Tuesday. It had been November eighth. Um, so uh, what do you think about this one? They like this date, they like this time. October last two came out in October, 
The first one, 850 million globally. The second one, just barely crossing 500 million globally. So do they think that this is the sweet spot for them and that's why they moved it? And do you like the fucking title? I don't know what it means. I mean, is there... <laughs> It means it's the last go round to win a title. That's what it means. Yeah, I have no idea. Like, what? The last dance. <laughs> Who is he dancing with? <laughs> last doing... dance. Right. Who's doing the dancing? I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, Juno would... Temple, clearly. So, yeah. But there's going to be like, what, multiple symbiotes in this movie? Mm. Right. Is yeah. Carnage back? They're gonna. I don't, even, they're gonna I don't even. Re- I don't remember what happened at the end of Venom Two. Like, yeah, Carnage we, was subdued for sure. He was subdued. Uh, yeah. Uh, so is, is he? Could he be in the movie or no? I don't know. It's subdued. Always, they never kill them off. It's always okay. a possibility. So, okay. Yeah, the All symbiote right. always come back. Yeah, yeah, I just have a feeling this is gonna be symbiote mayhem. <laughs> in Venom Three, the last dance. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm sure it conjures the the Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls series for many of us. But how big is that crossover, right, between fucking Venom Three and, and Michael Jordan fans? It's a good point. I don't know. I just thought it was an odd decision to name it something that's now in the pop culture mainstream, very well known. Is the last even people who weren't necessarily basketball fans watched that documentary because it came out during COVID. And people were sitting at home, isolating, and it got a huge response on social media. And so people watched it. So I, I thought it was an odd decision. Maybe they're trying to co-op some of that attention or some of that fame in some way by using that title. But whatever, we'll see uh, on this. Um, all right, well, let's take a quick break, Jeff. And on the other side, uh, do you feel like answering some Streamlabs Super Chats or doing some more? I new- sure do, John. Okay, there we go. We'll be right back right after this. You know, I have to check in with my friend. I have to make sure he's uh, he's available to do these things. I know how he can be sometimes, so I want to make sure we can answer the Streamlabs and Super Chats when we're ready to go. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we got 600 of you hanging out with us. Thank you so much. Please remember to hit a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers. We get well over 10,000 people watching this every week, so please subscribe to the channel. Get me to that 50,000. And Jeff, where can they go subscribe to your newsletter, my friend? TheInsnyder.com. There you go. And you got something big to drop tonight, uh, which I I think you kind of teased me about on text. So looking forward to seeing what that uh, that's a big news will be for sure. So uh, stay tuned. Did you tuned redeem your subscription? Yes, I think I did. I was reading the uh, the one you sent me. So, okay, yeah. so you can read it last night. I did. Uh, yes, 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 yes. All right. All there right. you go. It fucking you worked. Go. Good to know. Yeah. Good to yeah. know, Beehive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go and hit these stream labs. Cody Hunt says, I've never seen the original, but saw the trailer for the quarter day, and I'm totally in. John Wick with a supernatural twist. Scars guard looks good. Uh, Jeff, it's kind of a split amongst the people reacting to this. I'm terrified. I'd love to, you know, Lionsgate, wine and dine me. I'm open to it. <laughs> there you go. Cody Hunt says, uh, watch Shogun. Discount Tom Hardy is fantastic. Ha, yeah, Cosmo <laughs> Jarvis. That's who he's referencing. And yes, he is absolutely a tom hardy facsimile so to speak but a good show which jeff still has not watched for god's sake so i hope at some point he watches it yes sorry uh carlton rudder says having seen drive recently i saw zodiac this week i seem to be working my way along jeff's wall jeff do you have any other poster recommendations carlton where are you based bro i'll sell them to you (laughs) I've invested way too much money in my poster collection that everyone thinks is uh, worthless. Uh, I think it's one. Uh, it, it's a. It's a, one of the, the world's finest. Um, mm. I've got some great ones. I have a really unique, uh, rare, like Pulp Fiction one that looks like it's like a children's drawing, but like mm. taken out of like the Bible or something. Uh, I have one of those pulp. You know, like those Easter egg posters, where like. I have a, a Pulp Fiction poster featuring Bruce Willis inside of the pawn shop holding the sword, right? Nice. And everything around him is an Easter egg from Tarantino movies. Oh, that's cool. So, like, you see, like, the mug shots of, like, the Gecko Brothers from From Dust Till Dawn or, right. like, the Pussy Wagon license plate from Kill Bill. It's very, very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, we don't need to spend all, all the episode on my posters, but uh, I've got some good ones. A good Boogie Nights one featuring Heather Graham as Roller Girl. 
there you go. There's some recommendations for you, Carlton. Mondo, which of course is shut down their uh, poster production uh, place, but you can still find those online in certain places. They have a great approach to posters. And I think Jeff's gotten some of those. So Chris Cabrera says, hi, hey, John and Jeff, hope you guys are well. Do you guys have any insight or knowledge why the abrupt firing of the X-Men 90s, why the abrupt, why there was an abrupt firing of the X-Men 97 showrunner and writer? Jeff, do you want to table that? That's one of the topics I have. Should we just get into it now, the Bo DeMaio stuff? All right, let's get into it. Bo DeMaio was in the midst of uh, just about to be part of the premiere and the release of X-Men 97, which so many people have been excited about. This is a black gay writer who was show running this show. I remember seeing him at Comic-Con a couple of years ago talking about this show and seeing the designs. A lot of good responses last night from the premiere in Hollywood. A lot of people went to that. But Bo DeMaio was let go a few days ago. His Instagram account was shut down, was deleted, and no reason for the firing was given. And Marvel has not responded to anybody's request for comments. There was a, a statement released today from Brad Winderbaum, an EP on the show, who said um, that Bo, uh, that uh, he did excellent work, Bo DeMaio did, writing seasons one and two, and I can't wait for fans to see the series. The entire team came together. <laughs> the entire team came together to create a revival worthy of the X-Men 60-year legacy from San and Jack to the Claremont to the Lee Walls. We are all truly we're standing on the shoulders of giants. So, Jeff, uh, let me take this one down. Your thoughts. Uh, what do you know about this? What was your feeling when you heard the news that Bo DeMaio was surprisingly fired? I mean, I think I'm going to be writing about it tonight, but um, okay. so I don't want to, you know, I won't give away any like quotes or anything. But, yeah, okay. I think uh, I think he was probably difficult to work with and getting on everyone's last nerve. And um, I don't yeah. think that the only fan stuff helped. I think that that's where I'll leave it for now. And if you want more, you can you can subscribe. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't think that the only fans thing um, worked in his favor. Yes. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, he did have an OnlyFans that was not nudity. It was just an OnlyFans uh, stuff where he posted things of um, of what he was working on. Now, were there some shirtless pictures? I think there was. Um, and I and I've heard from a number from some people who work in the business who have intimated to me that there is something behind the scenes that went on. This was not because he's black. This was not because he was gay. There was some other stuff, which I've seen some people speculate and run, go crazy on social media for, yeah. but there's some bigger stuff behind that, the scenes. That's explicitly um, addressed in my report, by the way. There you go. Okay. You'll address that. But uh, I'm talking from my point of view and people yeah. I've spoken to. And yeah. so what, what I've heard is that he was not, um, <clears throat> there were issues with how he was dealing with stuff and how people were dealing with him. Now, do I have that, you know, from evidence and I've seen stuff? No, but from a couple of pretty good sources, uh, who are tapped into not only the animation community, but the gay community. So uh, that's what I've been hearing from my sources here um, in Los Angeles. So uh, there's more to come on this. And I think uh, as Jeff is going to write, sure, and other people I'm sure will write about uh, what's going on. And I'm sure there'll be a big announcement. But uh, this is a, I mean, they don't do this. You don't fire somebody right before their big thing is about to premiere. It was very, very unless it's something massive, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. It's unusual. All right. Do you want to keep going with these uh, or anything more to say on that? Mm, I think I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Sam O says, uh, was, with Emma Stone and her second Oscars win, can we declare that she's one of the greatest actresses of today's generation? It's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, Jeff, do you agree? I mean, I think it's kind of undeniable, I guess, at this point mm. after two Oscars, right? Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought, you know, Emma Stone from Superbad and Easy A was going to go on to win two Oscars before the age of 35, but she makes daring choices. And I think yeah. that that, you know, uh, that's and she's a she is a great actor. She's I mean, she's gotten lucky with some of these movies, too. Yeah. That's a big part of it. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you have to get a little bit of uh, lucky. It's all about your competition and, you know, how those movies are received. So right. there's so many things that are out of your control. Um, but yeah, hats off to her. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a fantastic uh, victory for her and a well-deserved one. As much as maybe a lot of people wanted Lily to win for their own reasons, I, I think uh, she deserved it very well and delivered a very touching speech when she won that award as well. And yeah, not just uh, not just Emma, bro, uh, Jonah Hill in Superbad as well. Who knew he was going to go on to be like a, a nominated for Oscars and whatever. So a film that was deceptively full of some really strong Michael talent. Sarah's next, I'm telling you. Michael Sarah. This is my Michael Sarah for American Psycho campaign right here. Oh, right there you Michael go. Michael Sarah, cast yeah. him. 
as long as he puts on some Sarah V in the movie. Um, Cody Hunt says, Scarlet is definitely an upgrade to Bryce. Maybe we can get a more grounded take. Is the title really Jurassic City? Could they go back to the island? Well, we ha- I haven't heard of this Jurassic City. Have you heard of Jurassic City? I mean, that's what's rumored, but I'm oh. not sure that that's official. And, and that's why I didn't include it last night. I just referred mm. to it as like a Jurassic World movie. But on that note, mm. I guess I will say how the initial tip came in. Okay. You ready for this? Let me, let me go to the actual language. Okay. okay. <clears throat> because it wasn't Jurassic City. Oh, okay. And it wasn't Jurassic World. Uh, someone fed it to me as Jurassic Park reboot. Lead offer to Scarlett Johansson. <sighs> that is how the tip actually came in. Jurassic Park reboot. Lead offer to Scarlett Johansson. So, what do you take? Are they just rebooting Jurassic Park? I mean, is that why they went and got the original writer? (laughs) They were going to have to credit him anyways. Wow. I have no idea. I have, I mean, listen, I'm I'm just saying that's how the tip came in. I have not investigated that. I did not ask anybody about that. Uh, I've had other people, you know, try to tell me it's like the Jurassic Saga or something like that. Like that that's like the, you know, holding company it's operating under or whatever. I don't fucking like. I don't know. I don't know what the actual title is, but I know Jurassic City. I don't think is n- technically official. As as uh, De Niro once said in uh, in the Raging Bull, I heard things. I heard some things. So uh, Jurassic Park, interesting. Okay, we'll see. Mike Joy says we had the McConaughey Are we in the Gosson Sons now? The Rosling Ryan Gosling Sons. Would you say that, Jeff? I don't think he ever left though. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't. I don't think he has <laughs> gone away uh, to merit like a big comeback thing. No, yeah. uh, we are very much in the age of the Foster Sons, guys. That's a real thing. That's going to happen. Okay. Watch. All right. Foster Sons. Uh, Gene Burton says, just watched Everything Everywhere All at Once on Netflix. I, one of the greatest movies I've seen, in my opinion. What movie do you watch once a year? What's your favorite beagle? Well, I don't know what that means, but uh, maybe What's that's your right. favorite bagel, maybe? Bagel? Oh, bagel? Let's let's interpret it as bagel because I don't know different kinds of beagles other than a big floppy eared beagle. Um, I say either an egg bagel toasted with butter or an everything bagel toasted with cream cheese and maybe a little bit of bacon in there if you can get it. I tell you, when when I was in my uh, better metabolism days, I loved having a bagel sandwich every morning for breakfast. Uh, that is, you can't do that. That's a lot of bagel. But now I allow myself one bagel breakfast a week. I drove, I drive over to Brugger's Bagels here in San Diego, and I get myself a whole wheat. Oh no, sorry, a sesame bagel with turkey sausage, double egg, cheese, toasted, and then I get a side bagel that is pumpernickel because I fucking love pumpernickel with strawberry cream cheese. That's my fucking breakfast. So that's what I would say to you. That is like a heart attack special. <laughs> I'm still here. I'm still standing. Never knock me down, Ray. Uh, what movie do you watch once a year, Jeff? Is there a movie you go back to once a year? You make um, sure you watch it? Yeah, definitely. What is? <laughs> She's got a great ass. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, uh, my eyes see Oppenheimer. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, Get him off the that stage. That was a bad moment. That was I terrible. <laughs> I was like, the, the producers planned for it. And then, they're, and then they like come out and take responsibility. I mean, it felt like they were covering for, of course. for our, you know, like that's an odd narrative. <laughs> like, yeah, just go out there and say whatever you want. That's the plan. Um, hmm. uh, crazy. Again, like, like that was not rehearsed that moment. He he looked like he was at a luncheon and had and get, had got tapped to come up and give an award. Right. I don't know where I am. Well, my eyes, uh, they see Oppenheimer. <laughs> Even when they played the Godfather music, he was like, oh, you're playing that one again. Haven't heard that in 50 years. Uh, Cody Hunt said, what happened to Hemsworth, the Hulk Hogan movie? Yeah, Jeff, have we heard anything more on that? Is that kind of tabled for now? Um. Yeah, I would not be making anything related to the WWE or F. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, I agree. Right now, it's uh, there. As much as they don't want, they don't want to believe this. They're kind of a a, 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 a nuclear topic right now. Do you know who Mike Corey is? Mike Corey. Mike Corey. Q U. Oh. Uh. No. Why? Okay. Then never mind. Okay. Do you want to text me about it? I don't know who that is. 
Uh, Jonah Hex says, good day to you, fine fellows. Uh, what do you think of Netflix announcing today that seventh season of Black Mirror will include a sequel to the USS Callister episode, Star Trek Dark Spoof with Jesse Plemons? Yeah, I, I don't watch Dark Mirror, so do you watch Black Mirror, rather? Did you see this uh, episode? I've been hearing this for years. I, I could have sworn I tweeted about it or potentially fed it to another site. Um, but uh, yeah, I have been hearing it. They've been mounting these efforts for years. Um, and it's nice to see it finally come to fruition. Uh, and I'm totally yeah. down for a sequel to that. That was a great episode. I need to go watch that. I don't really watch Black Mirror, but if it's a Star Trek spoof, I will watch it. Mickey Doss says, fellas, what is the deal with the Reeves trilogy? A whole year delay? Uh, Mickey, we talked about it. So hopefully we satisfied your... Uh, super chat there. Thank you very much for sending it in. Um, Tracer James 51 says, is it possible that Rogue Squadron is getting put together behind the scenes in case one of the upcoming movies falls apart? Could it be a substitute? Yeah, Jeff. I had a couple of friends reach out to me to say that they've heard behind the scenes that the Ray movie is a bit of a mess. So is this maybe a toe in the water type of approach to maybe have a backup film to go in case that Ray movie maybe doesn't happen or gets delayed or changed or what are your thoughts on this when you say like ready to go and everything like that no like i think rogue okay. squadron i think that they're probably waiting to like you know move on like they need to get that draft in and conclude business <laughs> oh, so, and then, oh, you think this is the closing of the the closing of the deal oh nah, yeah. what do you mean i'm just saying like I think of you know once she delivers that draft that she talked about, right? Yeah, it's like okay, thank you very much. You know, good luck with everything, and then they'll be free to sort of, oh, I see. You know, go go from there. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. I, do I think it's like one of the ideas on the board that's been crossed off? No. I'm just saying it's it is like in a holding pattern, kind yeah. of like what the trade said. Like it is in this limbo, and I I don't think that. Patty is suggesting that there's this momentum now, right? I think that she's off on her timing. Yeah. I agree. In terms of the timing that she talked about. And I also think that, yeah, it, it is, it remains in limbo. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um, okay, cool. Uh, Francis, Francisco Lopez says, Hey guys, are you watching Tokyo Vice season two? If so, what do you think of the season? I have not been watching the season, Jeff, yet. I still have to finish the last two episodes of season one. Have you watched season two of Tokyo Vice? I saw one episode. Uh, I do want to finish it. I, I It took me a while. I remember why I watched five episodes, right? HBO sent out five episodes when the show yeah. first debuted okay. season one. I watched those five and I liked them. Okay. But then I never, I didn't watch the second five episodes, right? Until like months and months and months later. Okay. Like, you know, eight or nine months later. And I fear that it will be the same for this. It'll be like when there's nothing else going on. Right. I will go back and finish Tokyo Vice because I do like that world and I, and I am curious, but it's just not a priority right now. It's not where I'm at. <laughs> TV watching wise. I've been watching like Blown Away on Netflix and Love is Blind with Stephanie and like. Hey. Homicide. You watch love. I I did a live watch along of the finale last night. Uh, I watched it last night too, bro. Oh my yeah, god, bro! Let's talk about it. Oh <laughs> my god, love is wine. <laughs> Dude, we are so fucking whipped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they uh, put a strike on the video because they could hear the audio of the show in my earphones. So so now I'm muted after 11 minutes, but. The finale started out great. All the drama and the tea in the first fucking 45 minutes, great. Then it slowly became a, a thing of like, we're a good show. We don't damage people. We see all these positive people who get married. It's a great thing, blah, blah, blah. But um, I thought overall it was a, 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 a well-produced but then also a safe approach to the reunion by the end of it. What, what, what did you think real quick? Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just love the the idea, like of how like embarrassed that I, that huge dude Trevor was. Oh, Trevor, right? yeah. And it's like, yeah, like I'm a toxic dude. Like I suck. Like, well, like well, bro, well, you are just admitting to like what and no one else here wants to admit to is that they're all here to get famous. Give me yep. like finding love is like secondary. Like that's like a nice bonus if they can find love. They exactly. came to get famous and be on TV. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's right? why Sarah Ann lied through her teeth when she said, oh, no, I didn't mean that. I was looking for love. Right. I love Jeremy. I, I gave you my heart uh, through the wall. <laughs> like, what? It is like the idea oh. that, yeah, that you could actually <laughs> – you could expect more from people who signed up to be on a dating show where you find oh. love without seeing anybody. I don't know. It's it's just the whole the whole thing is wild. But it was very entertaining this season. Yeah. Uh, Chelsea and Jimmy in particular. Oh, God. Yeah. Although Chelsea's like, I'm very proud of myself. I'm very proud of myself. I didn't respond. <laughs> you know what? Te give me your tips, Chelsea, because I, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> you need to teach me and John how to not respond to trolls. That's true. That's true. Uh, I I look more like Megan Fox than you, though, sweetie. <laughs> there you go. Now again, production says, thoughts on Variety's A-lister article mentioning Chalamet and Powell. Do their quotes earning sound right? Anyone else you would put on that level? Yeah, Jeff, they named some young Hollywood people, including um, uh, Tom Holland in this article. Did you like this? Do you think it was true? What, what are your thoughts on it? I mean, yeah, they're definitely a-listers i mean i don't know if Powell's an a-lister yet yeah i don't think he's an a-lister yet yeah i was at, oh, so okay so here's where i fell I, I thought glenn was a little high yeah i, I agree mean, with that five million a movie i was like whoa um i figured i would have figured him for like two and a half two two to three yeah uh and chalamet oddly enough felt a little low i was like he's, he's only getting eight he yeah. seems like a 10 to 12 guy like he feels like that. in the adam driver sort of range um yeah so uh yeah i mean but like yeah both of those guys are i think the next generation of leading men and sure. uh, i think that they're both entirely capable i, I like that those are going to be two guys who we have around for a long time yeah agreed and just uh, just 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 let it be known that i called both of them <laughs> there you go JMB says, in another lifetime, sky's the limit. What would you guys have been doing? Starring for the Celtics as a power forward, Jeff. Patrolling the midfield at Anfield, John Roca. You know, uh, Jeff, you're, you answer this one first. In another lifetime, sky's the limit. What would you guys have been doing? Staring for <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Um, I probably would have been like, you know, running the Celtics realistically. Oh, I mean, you want to be a... Am I, still, am I still in this like short king body? <laughs> Because I don't think I could be the power forward for the Celtics in, the, no. in that case, JMB. No. Patrolling the midfield. I mean, yeah. So here's the thing about soccer. Because I, I played soccer all four years of high school. Um, mm -hmm. I was always scared of heading the ball. Yeah. The, the goalie kicks this ball mm -hmm. to the goddamn rafters, and it's supposed yeah. to land on my head. <laughs> yeah, that's the game. I never, I never like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in another lifetime, no, I'd be playing NFL in another lifetime. I'd be like Lawrence Taylor. I would love to be a linebacker, wrecking havoc, and especially nowadays, making the money they make. I mean, some of this free agent money that I've been reading about the last few days, holy fuck nuts, man. It's mind-blowing how much these guys, these middling players are getting paid. So why would you want to be a, a running back or a fullback, John? The, the way these quarterbacks are being paid, it's insane. Yeah, and it's like Saquon Barkley and Derrick Henry. These guys are getting like eight million, twelve million a year, right? Yeah, yeah. Fucking Kirk Cousins gets like forty-five million a year. Kirk like, Cousins what? has one playoff victory, what? and he has made more money than maybe ninety-five percent of the country's GDP. For fuck's sake, it's insane how much he's made uh, playing quarterback. Yeah, you're right. But I'd want to take my anger out on something, so a nice little quarterback would be nice if I was playing. Uh, Adam Bernard says, Brian Cranston said during the Argyle press tour that he would love to be in a future Jurassic World movie. Do you think it's a possibility for Jurassic World 4? Yeah, I mean, Cranston could be an interesting choice here, Jeff. Cranston and just Scarlett Johansson, that's a, you're starting to talk about a little bit of heavyweights uh, going on here. What do you say? I have no idea what, what the script calls for. I mean, it would be, yeah, it would be cool to have him. But like the, the problem yeah. is like, what do you instinctively think, right? Mm. Give me the role. What do you, you know, think? Breaking Bad, of course. Yeah. You think villain. Right. right. You think, right. Yeah, okay, yeah, I could see him as the villain of some corporation or some yeah. general or who knows what the fuck. And it's like he always does that now. No, that's true. Like it wasn't Argyle as uh, Adam yeah, mentioned. He, yeah, he's done it a lot. I mean, Total yeah. Recall, right? And like, right. I don't know. Was like Danny it? Houston. You get was Danny it total, Houston. Was it Total him. Recall or was he in Robocop too? I, I Robocop, I think is what you're talking about. I can't about. even keep track of all like the crap <laughs> Brian Cranston has kind of done on the big screen. So. <laughs> Yeah. God bless him. He's he's the he's the man, but yeah. Good boys. 
Um, all right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this one's from Cowboys Fan 92. Hi, John and Jeff. Happy Thursday. I hope you're well. I personally loved this Oscar ceremony. What are you for cinema? I'm so happy for the boy in the hair on PS. I see Trevor Noah live tonight in Dallas, Texas. Nice. Enjoy that. Jeff, yeah, uh, we haven't talked about the Oscars. It's been a few days. We were going to do um, maybe a show on Tuesday, but it didn't really work out. So what are your thoughts, brother, man? Did you like the ceremony? Did you enjoy the uh, overall feeling of it? Or did you think it was yet another kind of wasted opportunity? What are your thoughts? I thought it was a really fun ceremony. Mm. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, to get, you know, 10 minutes of Kimmel doing like a monologue and yeah. the the John Cena bit and... Oh, God, um, right. You know, I'm just Ken, and I think that there was a lot to like in there, mm -hmm. and enough like cool moments, like with Emma Stone winning or yeah. Chris Nolan winning from you know, getting the the award from Spielberg. Uh, right. Yeah, I think that there was that was a pretty good bang for your buck, and it moved. It seemed to move fairly yeah. quickly. Moving a good tight clip, I agree. The fact that they were under time, as with two awards left, that was pretty shocking to see. I agree with the Kimmel thing. I also enjoyed uh, the Schwarzenegger, DeVito, and Michael Keaton thing for those of us who grew up with those Batman movies. Um, and I liked the pairings. I thought the pairings overall, except for maybe the Melissa McCarthy, Octavia Spencer pairing, I thought all the pairings really worked. I liked the actors introducing the other actors and giving them their flowers for their performance and for their career. I thought that was really sweet. Um, Emily Blunt, Ryan Gosling, that shit was hilarious. Um, uh, Kimmel, a couple of missteps with the Robert Downey Jr. joke, I think, you know, uh, and the Pacino thing at the end, I think, and the immemorium, I think, was not well done. So those are the only things I could ding it for, but those are kind of small in comparison. I was surprised how much I enjoyed uh, the, the show, really. What's happening right now with, with, with Campia? What are people talking about in the show? What do you mean? What's going on? I don't know. I'm just seeing like Campia being raided or something. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that means. I'm so Ray is for Twitch. I don't know what that is. I have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Anyways, um, uh, let's talk about Eddington real quick. Uh, Eddington? Okay, go ahead. Um, this is the the uh, Ari Aster movie, right? Which confirmed okay. this week that the A24 paid for his Dreamcast, right? Like yeah. they got they got everybody, and I wasn't sure okay. that they were. Okay. Oh, I see. Camry just means his show ended and people came here afterwards. Got it. Well, thank you, John, for, for giving. I hope you're okay yeah. and for uh, giving your audience. Uh, I mean, here. we have 600 people here the whole, a uh, lot of the time. All so. good. Ed yeah. Anyways, Eddington, Um, he got Joaquin Phoenix, Emma Stone, Austin Ooh. Butler, Pedro Pascal, big. Michael big. Ward. Like I said, it's 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 a deep cast. Yeah. Um, Clifton Collins Jr. And so the the log line on this has been all over the place yeah okay this okay. is what i was getting at last night like the log line calls it like a western about like this young couple that goes to like this small town yeah yeah in New mexico and like things aren't quite what they seem and it right. like framed it like that that was like what we were initially working on and then like yeah, this yeah, trade yeah. announcement comes and, and the trade announcement calls it like um about like a sheriff who like Right, you know, feel, right. feels like he's destined for for higher things or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to someone who read the script, and I ran this description past some insiders, and they said I didn't have it a hundred percent. Oh, okay, but but that it was closer than what's been out there. Okay, that there was an element of like something there, and so what I've heard about this movie is that it's like a meditation on guilt. Oh, interesting. Okay. That it's like Joaquin Phoenix is playing, I think he's playing the sh like the sheriff, right? Like mm -hmm. that would make sense. Mm -hmm. And Emma Stone, I think, is playing his wife. Oh, I wow. Think, I think. Okay. Right. And I think that the sheriff feels that he's above the law and can get away, right, with, do mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. doing certain things. And um, I think that he he crosses a certain line and it, the guilt starts to destroy his life. Ooh, in wow. a way. OK, that and like to me and again, I don't know if that's 100 percent. Right. Like, right. I, um, but I'm told it's closer to, to what has been out there in the past. And I felt responsible for like perpetuating 
that you know what what has been out there uh-huh. um and again i haven't read the script but uh th- that to me makes a little bit more sense than what i'd heard it because the casting to me i'm just like trying to figure it out and i'm like it doesn't make right. any sense right oh, okay okay that sounds great right I think it's, I think it sounds interesting and it, yeah. and it makes sense. You you need to have like some weight to this story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. R- right, like if you're gonna spend as much because they're spending on it. Clearly, right, yeah. right. Like right. Joaquin, Pedro Pascal, Emma Stone, Austin Butler. Yeah, this is an expensive A twenty four movie. <laughs> and and, and, and uh, Ari Aster needs this to to work. Yeah, right. Because Bo's afraid lost a ton of money, so he can't lose them a ton of money twice in a row. Right. There's right. a lot riding on this, and they must feel really confident in the script and, and its themes. Yeah. To not just like rely on star power to like open things, but like right. we have like good word of mouth. Like they had to have seen Bo is Afraid and be like, we're fucked. Like this is an F, <laughs> like this is an F minus <laughs> cinema score. Like people are we're going to hate trouble. this movie. Yeah. This is a movie that has to be, you know, when I think of like a modern Western, John. Yeah. I like love a, a simple plan. Oh yeah, I watched an hour of that the other night. I totally forgot really? about that movie. Yeah, I have. You know, I I've said this before in numerous shows. I watch Pluto TV. It's like couch surfing all over again. Like there's commercials, you can't fast forward, and I love it. So it's like every once in a while, I like to feel like I'm back in the 1990s or 80s, where I'm like I have to catch things when I catch them. And I was flipping through the movies channel, and a simple plan was up, and I was like, oh fuck, I totally forgot about this movie, and I just sat and watched an hour of it. Quietly, a damn good film. Um, isn't this, isn't that singer or who, who directed that? JJ, one of these Sam Raimi, Sam yeah, Raimi directed Sam Raimi. it. Okay. Oh, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I thought that was a fucking well done movie, man. It's totally different. Like it sticks out like a sore thumb in his uh, filmography, yep. but like in a good way. Yeah. And I remember as a 14 year old, cause I think 14 was when I started doing top 10 lists that I can oh, like, wow. re recall basically. Um, and it was number it two. Now. It you was number Matt and I now for the top 10 sub. You can't sue us now. It's I just story. remember the, the top three. It was uh, th- number three was Saving Private Ryan. Oh, yeah. Number two was A Simple Plan. And number one was American History X. <laughs> that film, man. Oof, that film. Um. Okay, so there we go. Let's keep moving on, Jeff. We got a bunch more. Oliver 3748 says, I thought Fallen Kingdom was unwatchable so much so I completely checked out from Jurassic World. But I but hearing that Scarlet could be the new lead that has me low-key excited for Jurassic again. Great scoop, guys. Well, it wasn't my scoop. Great scoop, Jeff. Give it all credit to Jeff. Okay, thank you. Here the, here the come. Thank you very much, Oliver. Uh Francisco Lopez says, I finally saw Doom Part 2 in the regular 70 millimeter. And it's fucking amazing. Now I really want to see it in IMAX 70 millimeter. I hope there is a third one. Yeah, there will be. Yeah, yeah. How can there not be for God's sake? And this is going to win fucking best picture, possibly. So, um, Mariana Barbara says, Any cry? Hey, what's up, Mariana? Good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Any corroboration of reports that Hayden Christensen is playing Silver Surfer in Fantastic Four, uh, and Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic 3? Yeah, Jeff, have you heard any of this? I have n- no idea. No, I okay. no, I have not heard any of those things. Sorry, Mariana. I'd be but real. Congratulations sorry. on graduating. Yeah. And graduate. Be, what, is that, what is that pronunciation for me? <laughs> I'd be super surprised if he's playing Silver Surfer. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm glad everyone's welcoming him back, but I mean, Hayden is a. Why would he get that role? Yeah. I, I don't know if that would make sense, you know? It doesn't. <laughs> let, let me tell you, it, yeah. it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. When you put down your nostalgia glasses and actually analyze this, I mean, Hayden is not the greatest of actors, although Shattered Glass, he was damn good in that. But, you know, I just was, you know that's what I'm going to say. Badass Time says, uh, uh, Stu, also known as the great Matthew Lillard, has to return now. Can you imagine the reveal and the hype? A la something like the split ending reaction. My God. Yeah, Jeff, uh, would you be happy with that? No, Stu is dead. A TV <laughs> fell on his head. He was electrocuted to death. I mean, he's, he's dead. I, I don't understand this theory. Does Jamie Kennedy come back? Does Jamie no. Kennedy come back? No? All right. <laughs> I mean... Uh, yes? <laughs> they come back if it's meta. Oh, right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only way you get all these people back, and I think that's what they should do. It should be the exact same fucking screen poster that existed the first time, except with everyone now. Oh, yeah. That could they, be They should go get Skeet, Drew Barrymore, fucking everyone. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's what I wanted to get at, or I, I got at in the newsletter, just so you mm-hmm. guys know. Like, what if Nev Campbell is like, because like, you know, Kevin, Gimble, he didn't even write the script. Yeah. He's only been an EP on these movies, not even like a producer who's like in charge. Right. I'm telling you, what if she's just like, listen, I'll come back. But Kevin has to be involved. And if there's if he can't be a producer and can't be a writer. Yeah. Then you better make him the fucking director or else I ain't coming back. I, I That's like the like, only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. I feel like there's no way they'd have gotten Nev without Kevin. I, I think they were a package deal. Yes. 100% agree with you. Like, she didn't feel comfortable coming back unless she had a cheerleader like Kevin Williamson who yeah. said uh, publicly that she should have gotten paid uh, after the Scream 6 debacle. So for her, this is like, Dude. this guy's got my back. This is the only way I'm coming back. I know I'm safe in his hands. Oh, don't die on me, Johnny. But, oh, no, is it me or you? Who, who's going on? I think it might. Oh, there we go. You're good to go. Did my um, go out? No, no, you're good. I can see you. Can you see us? Can you see us? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we might have lost Jeff. Did we lose you? All right, let's see if Jeff comes back. When Jeff comes back, we'll we'll figure it out. But yeah, it's it's that kind of a situation for sure. Here, let me take him down, and when he comes back, yeah, we'll bring him back up again and let's we'll switch the graphics again. Oh no, he's back. All right, there we go. All right, he's I'm back. All right, let's keep it going. Fuck. We got a lot more. Uh, I'm gonna give fucking Spectre a piece of my mind. Now I'm getting angry. Now I'm getting upset. <laughs> Not the tail end. Daddy's angry. Well, let's let him cool down for a minute. Let's take a quick break as we're at 30 minutes again, and uh, we'll be right back right after this. Uh, all right, guys. I'm sorry if you see me messing with my settings on my microphone. I just got a new mixing board, so I'm trying to make the sound uh, work for what I'm doing. So I apologize if you see me doing that. Um, all right, let's move on to some more of these uh, comments from our fans and see what they've got to say here. Cowboys fan, I do. P.S. This Oscars was my first live ceremony watch. That's good. That's a good one to enjoy. The badass times is it's Denis Villeneuve. Uh, Denis Villeneuve. Nolan Reeves, Affleck, and Lonergan, best directors of our times, and that's the order of my opinion. Your thoughts, Jeff? Does that sound right to you? And that's the order of being new. Nolan Reeves, Affleck, and Lonergan? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that's the list. <laughs> I don't think yeah. that's the list. No. Yeah, I think we got we could go deeper into that one. I mean, sure. Kenny Lonergan, I I just watched Manchester. Like that's a masterpiece. I agree. Like Kenny Lonergan is not on the list of like the best directors <laughs> of our times. No. Uh, let's see. Oliver also says, have either of you guys heard any details about the Fantastic Four story? I heard maybe time travel, multiple timelines. What do you guys think? Well, I mean, we can't really say if we've heard anything like because that could be an issue. But Jeff, what are your thoughts? I really haven't uh, heard heard much about Fantastic Four plot details. Okay. I have heard multiple timelines for sure, but that's about the extent of what I've heard. So we'll see. Uh, the Badass Times, did you guys get the 4K limited release of The Green Room? Could you imagine how great Anton Yelchin would have become Alpha Dog Classic and hits hard now? Yeah, Anton, yesterday's, I think it was yesterday was his birthday or the celebration of his passing. So um, what are your thoughts, Jeff? Uh, the anniversary of his death. <laughs> the celebration of his passing. Thank God. No, uh, and Anton Yelgen was amazing. Um, I, I thought he was a great actor. Yeah, and he kind of gets like lost, right? He yeah. kind of like doesn't get the attention that guys like River Phoenix or Heath Ledger get. Yeah. Um, but his death was just as tragic. And Green Room totally. is a great movie. It's like so well done. God, I remember that movie. Jeremy Snacks movie. That movie cost me a Schmodown match. I remember. That movie and the one against you, what the fuck was the name of Black Phillip or whatever. Joel Davis says, any news on the Ray movie? No, we don't have any news on the Ray movie. Unless you have something, Jeff. No. <laughs> All right. The Badass Times also says, how badass does Austin Butler look training as a young Chris, a.k.a. Val Kilmer? Her driver was seen with a buzz haircut, unrecognizable heat to update. <laughs> I mean, they'd have to start already being in production for the buzz cut to apply for Adam. Uh, Jeff, your thoughts? <laughs> he's, he's got a buzz cut. 
Uh, shit, dude. I have no idea. I really have not heard much about He Two, and it seems like yeah. Warner Brothers has like a very full slate. Yeah, but yeah. you know, who knows? Again, more release date news coming. I f- I figure we'll f- we'll get like a release date for like the Clint Eastwood movie. Maybe the David Robert Mitchell movie, the dinosaur movie that he's doing with Ewan and Anne Hathaway. Oh, yeah. Um, who knows if he too gets a release date in like 2026 or something. Ooh, I don't know. Could, could be interesting. Um, let's see. Comic Things says, heard a rumor that Janelle Monet is cast in Blade and Josh Gad in Wonder Man. Thoughts? Wonder Man. Thoughts? I uh, don't know about Janelle Monet and Blade, possibly. I mean, yeah. you know, makes sense. Could be um, fun. Josh Gad and Wonder Man, I buy that. I think yeah. I, I may have heard something to that effect. Yeah. Uh, I am to fly cams is John. Are you saying a Lucasfilm project is a total mess? Say it ain't so. That sounds so unlike them. I roll. I can't believe legacy people keep their jobs even if their stewardship is this horrible. I mean, again, the pro- the the franchise has made six billion dollars. So I mean, you can be mad as a fan of this stuff, but she's making money now. We're seeing lately though that that is starting to maybe not work out for them. So we'll see how this movie goes along. Um, yeah, uh, good comment there, I'm Two Fly Camp. Uh, Carlton Rutter says, Liverpool currently winning 4-0, LFC forever. Yeah, they are, Carlton, thank you. I mean, we're already at 5-1, so I'm not even watching the game. It's no big deal. The Badass Time says, are you guys friends with the Ringer crew? Love you guys more, but the big picture, the watch, the town, are now in my weekly film pods. Hook up with them? Oh, man. I don't think they'd come on our show, but I'd be happy to receive them, Jeff. I listened to to the big pitch picture, and I heard I've, uh, you know, that they mentioned me on the watch before, and I listened to the town. Um, nice. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think we can all coexist. Thanks for listening to uh, to us as well. Yeah. We yeah. don't have nearly as big a marketing push as those shows. It'd be nice I- if, you know, these, these publications, right, that do the 10 best uh, podcasts mm. of the year – maybe uh, expanded their horizons a little bit and did the work to actually, you know, seek out other podcasts. That's true. That's true. I agree with that. All right. Let's hit some stream labs here, Jeff. Uh, let's see. Where are we starting off with? Uh, yeah. Joe Close says, what's next for Bradley Cooper? I feel like he should have won the Oscar for a star is born back in the day, but um, I they didn't, they didn't campaign as much as the others. Then his team told him he had to campaign. Then everyone shit on him. Wonder if he's jaded by it all. But he was sitting front row with his mom, Jeff. So what do you think is next for Bradley Cooper, brother? I've heard he's going to abandon Hollywood and <laughs> go, go try out for the Eagles. There you go. Once and for all. <laughs> he was just um, on uh, He was just on Abbott Elementary uh, right after the Oscars on that uh, special. Like a good sport. Uh, I love Bradley Cooper. I think he's yeah. the man. And fuck all these fucking haters. Right, yeah. they did the same thing to Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Anne Hathaway is the shit. Okay, there's plenty of people who you know I, I don't like, and you know actors and things like that. But like yeah. Cooper and Hathaway, no, yeah, no, yeah. I would have to say um, I agree with Jeff. I thought people coming after Bradley Cooper was ridiculous, especially people who've never acted a fucking day in their lives, trying to come after what he was doing. I, I thought it was comical. On on his worst day, some of them aren't aren't as good at what they do on their best day, and it was hilarious to see that kind of stuff. Um, but I, I I want more for him. I mean, I think this is a guy who should not be stopped in terms of what he's doing and creating. And I would argue in that list that uh, Bradley just threw up. Uh, Bradley Cooper should go on that list for God's sakes. His last two films have been fantastic, and if he keeps going this way, uh, well, uh, his last two films are good. I would say too fantastic because i thought stars born was fantastic so he's a pretty good director yeah it's a fucking good director yeah um all right let's see what more we have here from anonymous will what will ava duvernay do next i hope studios aren't reluctant to work with her after all the neon slash origin drama this week she doesn't have anything in active de- development yeah uh, jeff an interesting director in ava duvernay the, the documentaries all seem to work but some of the theatrical fictional stuff or non-fictional stuff Maybe not as strong. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it was not a good look, you know, for mm. with how she has sort of behaved. Even if there is stuff to her 
you know, allegations, which I, mm-hmm. you know, I think are like kind of serious. Yeah. Um, I don't think you can blame Neon for that movie not working. Like, that's a fucking weird movie. Yeah. You know, like uh, you, people can, co- and I've seen the effect that it had on people, and it was like obviously very, very powerful, but you can't sell that to like you know mass audiences and it's a tough sell to academy voters even yeah it's like it's tough to be in the mood for that um and i'm sorry if she can't see that i think she's an excellent publicist i mean mm-hmm. she, listen she's a great filmmaker like yeah. you know like Elmo was really good when, when they see us was excellent yeah. um but like m- tell stories like don't it, it does feel like you know some of the stuff is just like a lecture it just feels like homework nobody wants mm-hmm. homework yeah, I'm, I'll disagree with you on that. We'll always disagree on that. But um, certainly there's a feeling that, you know, there's stuff that goes on. And I don't having a Twitter account for your most recent film go after the distributor of the most recent film for not inviting you to an after party and the creatives to an after party and then shutting that Twitter account down. That is a bad look and that is messy. Right on so many levels. So, um, that no and- one else was invited to, by the way, it's not like the Ferrari no. people were invited yeah, yeah. or like some of the other, you know, filmmakers who work with neon this past year. Yeah. It was basically a party for anatomy of the fall. Yeah. Yeah. Basically that. Exactly. Um, let's see. Uh, pussy O'Connell. Hello. It says, Hey guys. Hey Jeff, does the rumor of Chris Mundy, Tom King and Damon Lindelof being on board for DCU's lanterns, Pass your smell test. Also, should Lindelof maybe ask his co-writer from Watchmen, Court Jefferson, to help out as well? Newly minted Oscar winner. Thanks from Toronto. Jeff, your thoughts on that? Yeah, that would be interesting if Court Jefferson came aboard that show to even, like, direct. You know, yeah. like, I, that's the thing. I think that his directing career is about to take, to take off. Um, right. uh, and, and yeah. you, you know, you I think you want to do, like... Uh, an ongoing series, right. That sort of mm-hmm. pays bills for the next few years. Uh, I'm sure he's working on his next movie as well. So you, you also don't want to like overcommit to too much small screen stuff, even though that that's like a top priority project, you know? Yeah. Very true. Um, Slasa, do you guys, did you guys discuss Josh Brolin joining Zach Krager's weapons? When do you think this will start filming? We didn't, but that's good. But you know, the filming, uh, Jeff, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I think that the filming is soon. I think that's why Pedro Pascal couldn't do it because he, mm. you know, he had Last of Us and then Eddington, and then once that's done, he's going to do Fantastic Four. You know, like mm. you know, maybe in August or whatever the fuck it is. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think Brolin's a, a really good replacement. Um, but yeah, I would imagine that this is going during the time when Pedro is busy. Right. Um. And I just don't know like when what the release plans are for that. Like there's so many slots that have been taking up. Again, maybe we'll get weapons release date news in the next week. Oh yeah, that's possible. But yeah. it, it, but I wonder if it's like going to be pushed to 2026 almost. Like especially Ooh. if it's like a three hour epic. Like it may take longer to shoot. Yeah. It's supposed to be a huge ensemble with like a gigantic script. <sighs> okay. Yeah. So it takes time. All right, Mike Joyce says, Nev Campbell and the original writer returning to Scream can only mean one thing. Hashtag Stu lives. They originally planned for Stu Mocker to be in Scream 3, but changed their mind. So clearly he didn't really die in the first one. I think Stu will be the ghost face in this one, and his victims will be the people that covered up his death and know he's still alive. Sydney will realize what's going on and try to uncover the truth. How far off do you think I am? I can't answer that, Jeff. You answer that one. I'm sorry. I need you to repeat it. I, I was trying to figure out who was calling. Okay. okay. Uh, Mike Joy says, Nev Campbell and the original writer returning to Scream can only mean one thing. Stu lives. They originally planned for Stu Mocker to be in Scream 3, but changed their minds. So clearly he didn't really die in the first one. I think Stu will be the ghost face in this one and victims and his victims will be the people that covered up his death and know he's still alive. Sydney will realize what's going on and try to uncover the truth. How far off do you think I am? I like my idea more. Fair point. Uh, Luke the Gamer One says, Howdy from the UK. Saw John live in London for top 10. Respect, man. Thank you so much for saying so. Jeff, keep up the great work. Saw Dune 2 uh, three times. Dune Part 2, three times in the cinema. Amazing. Oh, shout out to you for having nine hours of your life to spend on that movie. It's worth it. Um, Papaya Man, what are y'all's two biggest peeves? Oh, biggest pet peeves. Whoa. Jeff? When people say two times when they could just say twice. 
Can you give an example? Like I went to the bathroom two times. You could just say I went to the bathroom twice. Oh, oh, you mean the usage of two times versus twice? Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. What's a pet peeve? Talking during a movie. To, I mean, just that's so yeah. massive to me. And if you do, okay. How about? <laughs> I mean, you got to know when to do it, right? Exactly. That's yeah. just that what I was going to say, John. Yeah. yeah. If you have to talk during a movie, right? You have to understand when it's appropriate and when it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Some people have no conception of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, some of the things I hear from people who are going to screenings in LA, I'm like, how is this? How are people getting away with this behavior? It is mind blowing to me. Um, yeah, and yeah, just talking to her in movies, my my best. That's my biggest pet peeve, I think, and. Um, yeah, and anyone who lies, I just don't like liars. That's I'm a big hatred of that. I don't like bullies. <laughs> there you go. That too. Sloth says, can Snyder reveal details on Ari Aster's next film, Eddington? Why does he say we have this one wrong so far? Jeff, I think you answered that, right? When yes. you spoke about it. Yes. Yeah. I just, I felt like I now gave a little bit of a better impression of what the movie is about a little bit. There we go. Uh, Badass Times, The Badass Times, says Manchester by the Sea is my favorite film of the 2010s. Why is Kenneth Lonergan not heralded as a legend of our times? Why does a mediocre director like Patty Jenkins get so much more hype? Also discuss in depth your thoughts on this masterpiece. <laughs> because Ken Kenny Lonergan does what he wants, right? Like he yeah. doesn't, you know, he's not about having to like, I have to pay for three houses and you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Maybe he does have three houses. I don't know. But, um, you know, I think that he, when he writes a script and it's ready to be made, then he makes it. Right. Uh, I don't right. think he's like on like a lot of open directing, like assignment lists. Like he's not like on studio lists for like, oh, this is the guy we got, we call when we have a whatever. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's basically my point of view as well. He's a guy who walks to his own uh, drumbeat and he is not seeking to be a big studio uh, filmmaker, it seems like. Um, and there are filmmakers like that who are quite happy making a living and a modest salary and doing what they can do because they get the freedom of doing what they want to do. Do you know what I'm saying? And to maybe make a little bit of a connection, like, look, would I love to work at Variety and make $100,000 a year, possibly at Variety? Fuck yeah, I would. But if it means they tell me what I can cover, they tell me what I can say, they tell me what I can talk about, then fuck that. If I can make a living not doing that and not make as much, so which sucks, but I still can make a living, I'd rather do that. There are other people who are quite happy going, pay me the six figures. I will I will tow the company line. I don't care. So everyone's different. And Patty certainly doing a big studio film. That's why people get more hype for her than Lonergan. It's just different. Uh, Sloth said, does Snyder have any updates slash scoops on anything, any upcoming indie films, any details on anything A24 or Neon related? Jeff? No. Okay, there we go. Samuel says, what do you I think? Mean, obviously, all the Neon stuff will be interesting with Ava DuVernay and like whether anyone does a deeper dive into that and whether, you know, other filmmakers of color feel that way that their movies were just sort of bought and abandoned, mm. which I have to tell you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, go what, ahead. Was a strategy employed by the, the Weinsteins, right? Yeah, no surprise. And, and, and Tom Quinn, who runs Neon, did mm. work for the Weinstein. So I don't know if that's like a, a page out of their playbook that he's actually taking or like mm. what the deal is. But sometimes they would acquire films that, you know, were, were contenders, right? Mm. And then not really push them because he had another contender in mind. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, I, I, I do think that Weinstein even would self-sabotage and, and bury his own movies sometimes. Yeah, he's a fucking moron, man. He was a fucking moron with some of these things. Samo says, what is your thoughts of YouTubers like Critical Drinker and Nerdrotic saying that the Oscars are irrelevant, pretentious, and boring and had its time, as well as Elon Musk saying the show is woke? I just find those folks annoying and truly don't and be, and they don't truly understand cinema. Uh, do you want me to take this one, Jeff, or do you want to say anything on this? Okay, fine. Here's what I'll say. I, I They have a right to their opinion. They're playing into their audience by saying all that stuff, and their audience says the same thing. It's all pretentious. Never mind that they all walk around quoting films made by these same directors and creatives and actors and what have you. Somehow there's a disconnect in their minds with that. They're also the same people who would probably watch a WWE Hall of Fame or a 
NFL Players Hall of Fame be like, oh, it's all the same thing, kissing their butts and whatever. So it's one night a year. It's three to four hours. It's not pretentious. It's a celebration of movies. Now, have people taken advantage in certain moments and said certain things? Sure they have. But uh, but in the end, to me, it's more about celebrating film and celebrating a thing that we love, which are films. And those people wouldn't have careers if it wasn't films, if there weren't films for them to bitch about or praise or talk about. So that's the way I look at it at the end of the day. And Elon Musk missed me with that nutball. I don't want to talk about that guy. Uh, anything you want to say on that, Jeff, or shall we move on? We can move on. Okay. How much more is there? Like, we're, uh, there's, we're, we're approaching sorry, there's two three, hours. Sorry, there's four more and we're done. Right. Susie Q says, hi, Jeff. Do you have any new insights on the bike riders? I saw you had tweeted something yesterday. Thanks. I don't remember anything I said about the bike riders. I'm looking okay. forward to the bike riders. She said you tweeted about it yesterday. Did you tweet anything about the bike riders or anything with that? Not, not that I can recall. Okay. All right. Susie Q, you might be off on that one. Thank you, though. Doug Developer says, when Michelle Yao won Best Lead Actress, it was such a historic and emotional moment for the Asian film community, and I was so sad because I wanted the same for Lily and the Native American community. However, I got to admit that St Emma Stone was better. And despite Hopkins' similar amount of screen time, people have said his performance in uh, Sons of the Lambs is so transcendent that you could feel his presence throughout the film as if he were the lead. And I don't think Lily was at that level, should have been supporting. Yeah, Jeff, maybe we should wrap up there. Your thoughts on the Lily Gladstone, Emma Stone, anything more to say on that? I just think it's hugely insulting to Dave and Joy Randolph to suggest that if Lily Gladstone had just run in supporting, then she would have crushed Dave and Joy Randolph. That's, she would not have. I don't think that's the case. I don't think she would have either. I think that mm -hmm. she would have lost pretty easily yeah, um and i think that best actress was her best play as evidenced by the fact that she did win the sag award yeah right. um i think she you know it was just a poor things was more liked by by the membership particularly international voters yeah who just didn't care about yeah. Killers of the flower moon which went over 10 yeah yeah, agreed. And I saw The Ringer talking about this with Scorsese, and I'm like, no, they just, it's bad timing for some of his films, but there isn't some bias against Scorsese in the Academy. I thought that was ridiculous when they Lily chose actress because I do believe that that she was a lead in that yeah. movie. I don't care how much screen time there is. Like, oh, she's only in 57 minutes of the, yeah. you know, it's she's like, it's, yeah. like who, it's not her fault that Scorsese made a three and a half hour movie. And by the way, fucking DiCaprio is only in half the film, too. Yeah, a great point. Exactly. exactly. According to your fucking math, so it's like I, nothing. Just the whole that whole argument didn't sit well with me at all. Mm. Um, it just felt like Monday morning, more, yeah, Monday morning quarterbacking. Yeah. Um, and it was, and this is about more than just this movie. It's about positioning Lily as a lead going forward. Right. Which she will be. Which she will be. Because if you win Best Supporting Actress, then then then. You're like on that list of actresses who are like the first people they think of when you need a supporting actress. Right, right. We are what you want. Right. Uh, Badass Times, last one says Has John McTiernan turned it in or does he have a comeback gem coming? He's a master that is also forgotten. I I haven't heard of John McTiernan in a very long time, Jeff. Do you know anything yeah, about I, I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, there you go. All right. Thanks, everybody who hung out with us today. We appreciate it madly. If we didn't get to all of the stories, unfortunately, it's because we just kind of ran out of time. So, Sorry about that, Jeff. Anything you want to say about anything we didn't get to real quick before we wrap up or, or just go ahead and plug your stuff, my friend? I'm just ready to yeah, plug the insider.com. I got to go get to work on buttoning up that story. And uh, yeah, thanks, guys. There you go. Sorry to Jeff that we went a little bit over. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We appreciate him taking almost two hours of his day to be on the show. Uh, please make sure you hit a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down below if you want to send some support after the show uh, and you're watching it later. Please hit that super thanks button or that thanks button and send in your love in that way. And uh, send in all your comments about all the topics we talked about today. We appreciate it madly. Y'all, as for me, at the Roca says on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, the Outlaw Nation on Twitch, Geek Buddies tomorrow, and maybe some Jedi Way possibly coming down the road. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode here of the Hot Mic. Have a great weekend, everybody. Go see a movie. Peace. <laughs>